On the line today, we have Howard. Howard, how are you doing today? I'm good, Shepard. It's good to be with you and your audience. Well, thanks for being on. And uh, by the way, where do you live? What's your occupation? Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, So my name is Howard Lickman, and I'm the founder of the Thick Red Line Project. I live in Cottonwood. Uh, I just moved to Cottonwood, Arizona, right outside of Sedona. And the Thick Red Line Project is a uh, is a nonprofit that supports police officers to say no to politicians on uh, lockdowns, mandates, and other victimless crimes. And so the idea is is that the police don't want to be enforcing uh, victimless crimes, uh, but they're pushed to do so by the politicians. And so we are supporting police and building community support within individual communities so that the sheriff or the chief or the deputies and officers themselves can link arms, draw a thick red line in the sand and say, Hey, we're not going to do, we're not going to enforce victimless crimes. And our thesis is if the, uh, if the, the people and the police unite against the politicians that there's nothing that that the politicians can really force them to do if they're united with the people. Okay. And so this is, this has nothing to do with Antifa or the, the black lives matter movement or any of that. It's, it's, so it's, I, I guess I'm trying to, trying to figure out, it's not a, it's not a against the cops thing. It's more of working with the cops. Am I understanding that correctly? Absolutely. And so uh, so we're not affiliated in any way, shape or form with uh, Antifa or with Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter is actually encouraging people to defund the police. And while we share Black Lives Matter's frustration with police abuses, we are excited to let them know there is a much better solution to the problem of police overreach and violence. And we believe that that is to get rid of the enforcement of victimless crimes. You know, and that seems to be that, I mean, that seems to be something that isn't a left or a right thing. I mean, I think if I, if I talk to my friends on the left or my friends on the right, everybody can point to a lot of things that they, they kind of wish the cops weren't doing. I remember when I was a cop, I hated (laughs) doing stuff that was, Uh, I don't know, you know, somebody's getting beat up. Yeah, I should jump in and pull them off. But there were so many things that were, uh, you know, not not helpful to anybody that we did. And and so those are the kinds of things, the victimless crimes that that you are uh, like, like, what are you doing? Is this is just just an awareness movement or, or what are you doing to to further your goals? Sure. Well, you know, so, you know, most people are just to just to kind of circle back on, you know, what victimless crimes are for the audiences. Um, You know, obviously not everything that a politician writes down as a law is moral or just. And so the so, you know, what we're saying to police officers is because so many laws get get passed by politicians that are obviously immoral and obviously unjust, and you just have to like look through history to see sundowner laws and and Jim Crow laws and fugitive slave laws and Nazi Germany as as an example of why you can't use man's law as the denominator of right and wrong. And so if you can't use man's law, then where are you going to use? And what we're doing is we're educating the police on something called natural law, which has a thousand year, uh, you know, legal tradition over over multiple civilizations. And the idea is, is that uh, natural law really is the barometer of is it a good law or is it, a, you know, is it is it, um, uh, you know, should the police, uh, you know, intervene And in natural law, there's five main transgressions, there's murder, rape, theft, assault and trespass. And these are all obviously wrongs because there's a victim. And anytime that there's a victim, we're saying, hey, please go ahead, protect the life, liberty and property. Uh, But um, uh, if there isn't a victim, then it's not really a crime under natural law. And the police should say no to politicians that try and get them either to use violence immorally on people that have that aren't really hurting anybody, 
or to raise revenue, uh, you know, on their friends and neighbors through what Sheriff Mack of the Constitutional uh, Sheriff and Police Chief Association calls uh, taxation through citation. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually got to meet him probably 12 years ago. I was at a, a Liberty leaning convention and got to hang out and chat with him some. Uh, he's sure done a lot of good work over the time. And it looks like you're, you're picking up from a little bit different angle, but it, it sounds like what you're doing is it's not wacko out there stuff. It seems pretty reasonable. Uh, and, and I'm not mm-hmm. as, I, I wouldn't say that I've ever completely understood or believed in natural law certainly something i need to investigate further but it it seems like even if i didn't completely understand that it would be a better foundation than whatever a bunch of guys in suits right scribble down on a piece of paper somewhere you got it and it's getting and the uh, the politician law is getting more and more you know creepy a lot of police officers you know they didn't sign up to enforce lockdowns and bankrupt their friends and neighbors uh and they didn't sign up for red flag laws and they didn't sign up for mask mandates and so the politicians keep you know piling the tyranny on and so the so you know if you talk to most police officers they all claim to have a thick red line that they're not willing to cross and that's usually gun confiscation or something similar and what we're what we're you know educating them on is that if you're going to draw a thick red line in the sand then the logical and the moral place to draw the line is no victim no crime and uh, if there's not a victim it's not really a crime and police should not be using violence or threatening violence or extortion you know on peaceful people to you know to socially engineer society or to, you know, or to uh, raise revenue on their friends and neighbors. Gosh, that sounds like such a valuable thing. I recall as a cop once uh, we were called to a code violation and someone had in a, in a shop downtown had leaned a wagon wheel uh, in a 750 square foot area that was supposed to be natural, just plants growing and such. And a mm-hmm. competitor had complained that they were they had their merchandise in this area that was supposed to be set aside as an aviorium or whatever. And it just mm-hmm. struck me, even at the time, two armed police officers walking into a private business to enforce this ridiculous law that there was no victim of. And but as a cop, you feel like, well, I have mm-hmm. to do my job or I'll get fired. And it sounds almost like your project is saying, hey, Shepard, you're not the only one that realizes how messed up that is to hinder business owners and and just people who want to live their lives in peace. Uh, it seems like you're almost giving yep. a, a community that I can say, wait, I'm not the only one. It's okay to say no to the boss sometimes when he wants you to do bad stuff. That, that really seems smart. That seems neat. Thank you. Yeah, well, you're welcome. And so we know that there's a lot of police officers that are, you know, in the same moral quandary that you were in with respect to the wagon wheel. And they don't want to be enforcing these lockdowns. They don't want to be bankrupting these local businesses. But they, you know, I know from talking to dozens of officers that they feel trapped. They feel trapped by losing the job and losing the pension. And so, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to to build support and really let them know that they don't have to go along, you know, with this tyranny. They can lock arms and collectively refuse to enforce these uh, victimless crimes. And so that's what we're doing. We're educating the officers that they have a choice and then we're building support in the in the in the community. Uh, for a department or a sheriff's office to go thick red line. And if they're, you know, again, if they're supported by the community and there's dozens or hundreds of, of deputies and officers that collectively refuse, then there's nothing really the politicians can do to make them uh, if they if there's if they refuse collectively in large numbers. And so we're popularizing the idea. We're talking with sheriffs and chiefs and uh, deputies and officers, and we're looking for the first couple of sheriffs to go thick red line and just issue a blanket declaration that, hey, we're not going to enforce these laws. uh, And, uh, you know, we're not going to use violence on peaceful people. And uh, that's really what we're all about. And you can get more information at thickredline.org. Wonderful. And is this something that 
uh, a civilian would have any reason to get involved? Or is this just a website for police officers? Or is there something that if there's just somebody that wants to support their cops, they're, they want to be active in the community and maybe show the cops that they care about them, are there options for those folks as well on your website? Absolutely. And so what we're doing is we're recruiting community ambassadors that are, are helping to organize their own communities and even, even foreign countries. We've had um, uh, interests in Thick Red Line from around the world. We've chartered our first um, international chapter in the Netherlands and our material is being translated as we speak into Dutch. But uh, even if you're in the you know good old USA and you you realize that the that your you know, police officers uh, are you know trapped in this this uh, you know in this uh, enforcement of victimless crimes and you want to do something, then we've got training sessions and we've got resources. We've got a handbook uh, that helps uh, uh, identify how to th- redline your department whether you're a uh, community leader and uh, community ambassador for the Thick Red Line Project, or whether that you are a sheriff, chief, uh, deputy, or officer, we've got resources to help uh, go Thick Red Line. And we especially like community ambassadors that have the gravitas to schedule a meeting with their sheriff and go in and you know explain to the sheriff, hey, we're here to support you. Um, and that they can also meet with the local media and journalists and elected officials and really, you know, build support within the community for the sheriff taking a thick red line stand. And uh, if the community is supporting the sheriff, then there's really nothing the politicians can force him to do. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on today. Uh, website again, thickredline.org. Is that correct? It is thickredline.org, and we're uh, we're about to launch a petition campaign to help uh, build support among your local community for uh, the sheriff uh, uh, or the chief uh, refusing to enforce victimless crimes. So that's something that's new at thickredline.org. Mm-hmm.